hello students welcome to this session today i am going to present you regarding the topic of deep cervical fascia under that investing layer of deep cervical fascia in detail okay so before going to the deep cervical fascia let me tell you something about what is fascia the general anatomy term what is fascia so fascia is the connective tissue okay it's a strong connective tissue which is also forming the support isolation for the structures and it also envelops these structures okay so it also forms important for the support and also for the protection of the structures so that is the importance of fascia there are two types of fascias that is after you reflect the skin you will be having superficial fascia and you will be having deep fascia coming to the superficial fascia so in the superficial fascia you will be finding the fat it is also called as subcutaneous layer so you'll be finding fat and you will be also finding cutaneous nerves vessels etc whereas once you remove the superficial fascia then you are finding the deep fascia so deep fascia is strong and dense with connective tissues okay tightly packing the underlying structures so superficial fascia you have and deep fascia you have so what is the significance of this fascia is it forms the septum okay it isolates the structures also and it forms the intermuscular septum also and the importance of this fascia is it limits for a uh, limit it is like spreading the infections but sometimes the abscess and all can digest this fascia and it can cross the layers of fascias okay so it also provides the slipperiness to for the structures to glide or move over one another so superficial fascia as i have told once you reflect the skin you will be finding the superficial fascia with cutaneous vessels nerves fat etc and in the superficial fascia of the neck superficial cervical fascia you also find one subcutaneous muscle that is called as platysma muscle okay so it is also called as subcutaneous layer superficial cervical uh, layer and you also have platysma subcutaneous muscle along with the cutaneous nerves vessels fat etc and once you remove the superficial fascia you will be finding the deep cervical fascia of the neck okay which is also called as fascia coli the fascia of the neck is also called as fascia coli so in that again there are three divisions anterior middle and posterior so three layers of deep cervical fascia are investing layer pretracheal layer and prevertebral layer okay so investing layer i'm going to tell now in detail a little about its attachments and the muscles which it is splitting and enclosing the glands which is splitting and enclosing etc okay so pretracheal and prevertebral layer the name itself indicates pretracheal in front of trachea you find a thyroid gland so pretracheal layer will split and enclose the thyroid gland when coming to the prevertebral layer in front of the vertebral column you find this prevertebral layer so whatever the pre vertebral muscles are there scalene muscles okay scalenus anterior medius posterior and the rest levator scapula all of this muscles scalene muscles prevertebral muscles are covered by prevertebral fascia so now coming to the investing layer so you can see there the platysma muscle there that is the subcutaneous muscle so once you reflect that platysma muscle you are finding the deep fascia you can also see that deep to the platysma you are finding first forming the roof of the triangles of the neck you are finding that deep cervical fascia investing layer and you can also see that you it is like covering the two important muscles of the neck that is sternocleidomastoid in front and trapezius behind okay so investing layer splits and encloses these two muscles sternocleidomastoid and trapezius muscle so this is a horizontal uh, section and the sense transverse section of the neck where you can see all the three fascias so whatever is shown in blue color investing all around the neck you find covering these two muscles splitting and enclosing these two main muscles that is sternocleidomastoid and trapezius you have the investing layer okay and pretracheal layer is shown in orange color there in front of the trachea enclosing the thyroid gland and prevertebral layer okay you finding the vertebral vertebra there vertebral column and you see that enclosing prevertebral fascia so investing layer of deep cervical fascia attachments you need to know above below okay and its horizontal extent and vertical extent so coming to the above extent of investing layer so you find attachments so that is from external occipital protuberance then the line extending there that is superior nuchal line and then you find the mastoid process attachment then to the external acoustic meatus 
zygomatic process and at the angle of the mandible or lower border of the mandible till the chin so this is all the upper attachment of the investing layer of deep cervical fascia so you can see once more in the picture i repeat again so that is external occipital protuberance then you have the superior nuchal line then you have the mastoid process then you have the external acoustic meatus zygomatic process of the temporal bone and you find the at attachments to the lower border of the mandible and then to the chin so this is the upper attachment of the investing layer of deep cervical fascia so in this picture itself you can also appreciate the lower attachments of investing layer so we start with c7 cervical spine then you see the spine of the scapula to all of the spine of the scapula spinous process of the scapula acromion process of the scapula then to the borders of the clavicle and then to the manubrium sterni and till jugular notch or suprasternal notch of the manubrium sterni so till there is your lower extent of investing layer of deep cervical fascia so we finish with upper and lower extent okay so behind you see it is like supporting with the other side that is through the ligamentum nuchae so ligamentum nuchae is the ligament that you see from external occipital protuberance covering all the spines cervical spines it is attached until c7 so that is ligamentum nuchae where you come to the anterior part with the fellow of the opposite side it is attached but the border is the chin hyoid bone midline structures of the neck and till the jugular notch okay so from behind forwards as i've already told i repeat again it is from c7 spine to the spinous process of scapula then acromion process then clavicle borders of the clavicle and you see at the suprasternal notch or jugular notch of manubrium sterni so till there is a lower extent of investing layer of deep cervical fascia coming to the horizontal extent when passing horizontally as i've told already it splits and encloses two important muscles of the neck major muscles of the neck that is sternocleidomastoid and trapezius muscle okay once it is splitting and enclosing this muscle it also forms the roof for the posterior and anterior triangles of the neck so that is horizontal so as you can see in this picture apart from enclosing the sternocleidomastoid muscle the deep uh, muscles in the anterior triangle that is the strap muscles infrahyoid muscles sternohyoid sternothyroid and thyrohyoid so these muscles are also omohyoid so even these muscles are also covered by investing layer coming to the vertical extent you have the splitting and enclosing of two important glands there that is parotid gland and submandibular gland so it splits and encloses the parotid gland first and then lower border of the mandible you find submandibular gland so investing layer splits there and it encloses the submandibular gland also and lower to that it thickens to form one ligament attached from styloid process to mandible borders of the mandible that is stylomandibular ligament and as it comes towards its attachment to the lower extent it encloses two spaces that is suprasternal space and supraclavicular spaces so in this picture you like you are seeing the, from the external occipital protuberance superior nuchal line mastoid process external acoustic meatus then uh, zygomatic process like that and to the lower border of the mandible so from styloid process to the mandible you have the thickening stylo mandibular ligament so just to show the diagram how the investing layer of deep cervical fascia is splitting and enclosing the parotid gland and also splitting and enclosing the submandibular gland at the lower border of the mandible so once again to see about the attachments in the lower portions acromion process spine acromion process of the scapula clavicle and manubrium sterni so when it is passing there it will split and enclose the two important spaces the space of burns or supraclavicular space space of burns supraclavicular space so space of burns is also called as suprasternal space thank you